Thank you all for listening and watching my videos, please subscribe and like my channel Master Coolits. Hoping that you will not skip my ads, it's a big help for me by not skipping it, thank you so much. Dragon Shadow. The Rise. In the depths of Dark Wolf Hall, tension hung in the air as Zane Martell, Clayne, and Katie made their way to the Elders' Union, accompanied by Master Gideon and Aaron. This was the heart of Dark Wolf Hall, where all significant decisions were made, and Zane Martell was about to face his ultimate test. The Elders' Union was the most formidable organization within Dark Wolf Hall. Ten Wolf Princes and Princess had risen to their titles only after facing the judgment of the Elders. Zane Martell, was no exception. They approached the entrance of Yuming Hall, marked by a colossal wolf statue. It stood nearly a hundred meters high, its eyes glowing a menacing dark green. Three elders, I have brought Larry Shaw and Master Jin here. Master Jin has some questions about Larry Shaw becoming Wolf Prince. In that case, all you can come in. The door opened to reveal a grand conference hall where three ancient elders sat their presence radiating a sense of immense power. Zane Martell felt a wave of intimidation wash over him. The strength of these elders was beyond anything he had encountered. First Elder, forgive me for disagreeing with Larry Shaw being bestowed the title of Wolf Prince. Master Gideon stepped forward, his expression serious despite his inner fury. Zane Martell observed the three elders. One was exceedingly thin, almost skeletal. Another was rotund with sagging fat and narrow eyes. The last was an old woman who seemed kind, but held an air of hidden power. Are you Larry Shaw, the second celestial body disciple of Dark Wolf Hall? My name is Larry Shaw. Nice to meet you three. Zane Martell's heart pounded as the skinny elder scrutinized him. Not bad. Your bones are amazing, hmm? Your body, why does it contain so many different demon blood essences? It even has blood essence from several ancient demonic beasts. With a mere glance, the Elder saw through Zane Martell's secrets, causing his heart to race. This was the power of the expert level. As Zane Martell entered the Grand Hall of the Elder's Union, he could feel the weight of countless eyes upon him. His newly acquired forehead guard concealed the strange vertical eye between his eyebrows, hiding his true power. First Elder, this is the reason behind my cultivation. I see. The skinny elder turned to Master Gideon, his tone gentle and inviting. Master Jin, why are you against this? We three old geezers came to this decision together. Are there any issues you want to raise? Master Gideon's face twisted with fury as he pointed an accusatory finger at Zane Martell. My child, the wolf prince was killed by Larry Shaw in the back mountain just now. In addition to my child, Larry Shaw has killed a total of 21 people. How can such a bloodthirsty man bear such a heavy responsibility? The hall fell silent as the gravity of Master Gideon's words sank in. The other two elders frowned, their expressions darkening. What's going on, Master Jin? Tell me more. Master Gideon's voice echoed through the hall, filled with righteous anger. My son was lured by Larry Shaw to the back mountain. When he went there, he found out that Larry Shaw had set up a trap to launch a sneak attack. At that time, more than 20 people were present who tried to help, but they all died at Larry Shaw's hand. The accusation hung in the air, heavy and damning. But before anyone could react, Katie's voice cut through the silence. Bull, that's not true at all. The hall buzzed with shocked whispers as everyone turned to look at Katie, who stood defiantly. What did you say? Were you at the scene? How do you know if it's true? The hall grew colder as Master Gideon's face darkened. He glared at Zane Martell, his eyes burning with rage. Although Katie wasn't present, she knew Zane Martell would never do such a thing. In truth, it was Aaron and Katie who had lured Zane Martell. Larry Shaw, let me ask you, is this true? No, it was the Wolf Prince who kidnapped my friend as a threat and asked me to go to the back mountain alone to find him. Yes, I can attest to that. My men have saved his friend from a random cave in the back mountain. The surrounding people began to murmur, their opinions split. Master Gideon's expression twisted with anger as he spat out his next question. Did you kill my son and the others? Zane Martell met gaze, unflinching. Yes, I did kill them. They wanted to kill me first. 
Was I supposed to stand still and not defend myself? The elders' faces shifted slightly. They huddled together, whispering, their words lost to the room. Katie and Clayne exchanged worried glances, frowning. To them, Zay Martell should have denied everything. In Dark Wolf Hall, a wolf prince's word was law. Self-defense wasn't recognized. Killing a wolf prince meant only one thing. Death. Master Gideon's lips curled into a smug smile. He thought Zane Martell was done for, especially after admitting to the killings. Suddenly, the kind-looking lady elder spoke, her voice cutting through the tension. Larry Shaw killed a wolf prince, so he should be executed. However, due to the special circumstances, we can give Larry Shaw a chance. What kind of chance? Zane Martell's puzzlement was evident. The room fell silent, hanging on the lady elder's next words. You killed a wolf prince. According to the rules of the sect, you must be sentenced to death, unless you are also a wolf prince yourself. Therefore, if you want to avoid death, you must pass the test and become a wolf prince. Her words were clear and unwavering. Katie and Clayne's faces darkened with the realization of what this meant. Passing the test to become a wolf prince was nearly impossible. Zane Martell had the strength, but the test involved something sacred, the kowtow to heaven. Only true members of the demon clan could pass it. Aaron, Katie, and others had earned their titles this way. Originally, Katie and Clayne had hoped to find a way for Zane Martell to bypass the test. But now, with everything that had happened, that seemed unlikely. The challenge ahead was dawning. Would Zane Martell overcome it and secure his place, or would he fall, unable to meet the impossible demands? The answer lay in the test he now had to face. In the shadowed halls of Dark Wolf Hall, tension hung as heavy as the ancient tapestries on the walls. The air was thick, redolent of old stone and lingering secrets. Amid these hallowed corridors, Master Gideon's smirk was a silent promise of vengeance as he taunted Zane Martell with a cold laugh that echoed off the arched ceilings. Ah, Larry Shaw, your demise is near. Once you fail this test, I'll be the one to sever your head for Katie's sake. Unbeknownst to Zane Martell, he was walking into a challenge that could end his life, yet the idea of becoming a wolf prince had never been part of his plan. Circumstances, however, have a peculiar way of reshaping one's path. The cold stones underfoot seem to whisper of the many fates sealed within these walls, each step forward a descent into a destiny foretold by whispers in the shadows. All right, elders. I accept the challenge of becoming the wolf prince. Zane's heart surged with a battle spirit, as fierce as the winds of war. With the test set to begin in three days, Katie was tasked with watching Zane Martell, ensuring he didn't escape his fate. As the guardian of his trials, her eyes rarely left his, filled with a mix of stern duty and concealed concern. In the solitude of his quarters, Zane Martell sought knowledge about the Wolf Prince's role. The room lit by the flickering light of a single candle cast long shadows against the rough-hewn walls as if history itself watched eagerly. Katie, with her voice low and steady, shared the secrets. The hall had ten wolf princes, all from the demon clan, but never a human. Zane Martell was about to tread where no man had before, a path fraught with peril and shrouded in ancient mystery. Larry Shaw, this passage leads to the wolf prince test. Survival means success. Others get a token for emergency escape, but you won't. Be careful inside. As Zane Martell stepped into the dark corridor, every eye in the hall was fixed on the sky screen, displaying his progress. Shadows clung to the edges of the passage, moving as if alive with the spirits of those who had walked this path before. Master Gideon, standing amidst the elders, scoffed at his chances, his voice dripping with disdain. Even if Larry Shaw survives a few hours, he won't pass. Killing him now would be easier. Deep in the passage, Zane Martell discovered a secret chamber. The air was cool and musty, thick with the scent of untouched antiquity. Before him stood a solitary wooden puppet, its surface smooth and unyielding, bathed in the faint glow from the moss-covered walls. It seemed inanimate, a silent guardian of the chamber's secrets, until Zane Martell's touch sparked it to life. 
The wooden joints creaked and groaned as if awakening from a long slumber, and a fierce battle ensued. Zane Martell's martial prowess against the mechanical beast. This is the test, child's play. I haven't even started to get serious. With swift movements, Zane circled the puppet, his footsteps echoing softly in the chamber. Each strike he delivered was met with the mechanical whir of the puppet's counterattacks, its wooden limbs moving with surprising speed and precision. The puppet, crafted by ancient magic and intricate engineering, was a formidable foe, its attacks becoming more aggressive and unpredictable as the battle wore on. Zane's breaths grew heavier, his focus sharpened to a razor's edge. Around him, the walls of the chamber seemed to pulse with an ancient energy, the air charged with the anticipation of his potential triumph or defeat. This test was but the first of many, each designed to challenge the very essence of those daring enough to walk the path of the Wolf Prince. As the puppet lunged, Zane deflected the attack with a graceful parry, the clatter of wood against metal resonating through the chamber. He knew this was no ordinary test. It was a dance of death, each move a test of his resolve and skill. Outside the chamber, the elders watched with bated breath. Among them, Katie's expression was unreadable, her thoughts obscured behind a veil of duty. Yet deep within, her heart raced for Zane, hoping for his success, yet fearing the dangers that lay ahead. In the darkened corridor leading back to the world above, whispers of past contestants filled the air, their voices a mixture of courage and caution, urging Zane on while warning him of the perils to come. They think this will break me. They're wrong. I will rise. With one final powerful blow, Zane shattered the puppet, its pieces scattering across the stone floor like fallen leaves in a storm. As the dust settled, the silence in the chamber was profound, broken only by Zane's heavy breathing. The first gate then creaked open, leading to deeper darkness, the unknown trials that awaited filled with promises of greater challenges and darker secrets. Onward then. Let the shadows hold no power over me. As Zane stepped through the gate, the echoes of his resolve reverberated through Dark Wolf Hall, a testament to his unwavering spirit. Behind him, the broken puppet lay as a reminder of his capabilities and a warning to those who might underestimate him. Ahead, the path wound deeper into darkness. Each step a descent into a world where only the bravest or the most foolhardy dared to tread. As Zane Martell crushed the puppet beneath his boot, the first gate opened, revealing another, darker passage. Here, the real test began. In the pitch black, Zane Martell could sense, rather than see, the danger that lurked. The air was thick with the musty smell of decay, and the narrow walls seemed to close in on him, whispering of unseen horrors. A fist-sized rat lunged at Zane Martell from the shadows. Its eyes glinted with a malevolent red light, cutting through the darkness. He activated his silver body defense, turning his skin to an impenetrable metallic sheen. The rat's teeth sparked against him, futile in their attempt to penetrate the magical armor. Come on then, I'm not afraid of you. His defiance seemed to summon an army of demonic rats, each emerging from the shadows like phantoms of the night. They swarmed towards him like a tidal wave of teeth and fury, their eyes glowing and bodies slick with the damp of the underground. Hey, hey, how does Larry Shaw think he's smart? Overconfidence is a fatal flaw. As the mass of creatures surged, Zane Martell stood ready, his figure a lone bastion against the dark onslaught. His breathing was calm, measured, each inhale and exhale a meditation on the present moment. His eyes, adapting to the lack of light, caught the slightest movements as the rats approached in waves. The ground beneath him was slick with the moisture, making each step a careful calculation. Above him, the ceiling dripped with condensation, the droplets falling like the ticking of a clock counting down the moments of this eerie confrontation. Each beast that comes at me is another step toward proving myself worthy of the Wolf Prince title. His hands moved with precision, every muscle new working in perfect harmony as he dispatched the rats with swift, decisive movements. His silvered skin shimmered under the occasional flicker of light from the small cracks in the ceiling where the moon's eerie glow seeped through, casting ghostly shadows across the battle scene. The rats, relentless in their assault, seemed to be driven by a force beyond mere hunger, perhaps a dark will that sought to test Zane's very soul. With each creature he felled, more seemed to rise, as if the very stones of Dark Wolf Hall bore them from its ancient depths. 
Would his strength and wit be enough to carry him through the shadows? Or would the overwhelming tide of demonic beasts be his undoing? His body moved on instinct, a dance of death played out in the heart of darkness. He may be strong, but no one has ever faced such odds and emerged unscathed. As the battle wore on, fatigue began to claw at Zane's limbs, each movement heavier than the last. Yet his resolve did not waver. If anything, it hardened, forged in the fires of relentless combat. Around him, the fallen bodies of his adversaries piled up, a grim tapestry of his determination and skill. The air grew colder, and a faint mist began to rise from the ground, swirling around Zane's feet as he fought. The howling wind outside seemed to grow louder, a chorus to the symphony of clashing and death within the passage. This darkness will not defeat me. I am more than just a man. I am a warrior shaped by destiny. In the depths of Dark Wolf Hall, amid the echoing howls and the clatter of battle, a tale of courage and conquest unfolds, a tale that will be whispered in the hallowed halls for generations to come. Zane Martell, whether victor or vanquished, will become a legend, his story etched into the very stones that have borne witness to his trial. Previously, Zane Martell navigated through treacherous trials with his unmatched prowess. Now, an unforeseen challenge looms ahead. Zane Martell couldn't see but he heard the cacophony of squeaks. He smiled, taking a step forward, feeling the presence of the mouse demonic beasts enclosing him. Let's dance. With a swift motion, Zane Martell unleashed a storm of sword energy. In an instant, the beasts lay in pieces, the passage drenched in blood. As his sight returned, Zane Martell noticed the creatures had three menacing red eyes. Three eyes? Could they be connected to my vertical eye? No, it's more likely tied to the devouring dragon. Shaking off the thought, Zane Martell pressed on. Light intensified ahead, dispelling the darkness. Emerging from the passage, Zane Martell stood stunned before an enormous lake. There was no bridge, no path, just a shimmering expanse of water with an exit glinting on the opposite shore. At the bottom of the lake, ghastly skeletons lay in a macabre pile. So many, all killed during the test. Over 800 corpses lay submerged, a grim reminder of the lake's lethal trials. He prepared to fly, but an invisible shackle bound his vital energy, rendering flight impossible. Not again. Is there another formation here? Memories of struggling in the Tian Gang River of the Spirit Fusion sect flooded his mind. The frustration of being unable to use his vital energy gnawed at him. I can't fall into that water. Certain death awaits. But how do I cross without my powers? Zane Martell's thoughts raced, searching for a solution. He knew the stakes. This stage would not be conquered easily. Zane Martell sat at the water's edge, deep in thought. The light flickered on the water's surface, taunting him with its calm facade. There's got to be a way. If I can't use vital energy and there's no formation to break, what's the trick? His mind churned, considering every possibility. The lake's eerie silence weighed heavily on him. Under the imposing wolf demon statue, Catelyn stood nervously. She desperately wished to shout the answer to Zane Martell, but he couldn't hear her. Clayne, can't you ask Madame Evelyn to give Larry Shaw a hint? Clayne shook his head, his voice steady. It's useless. No one can break the sex rules. Not even us. Just then, Aaron smirked, directing his mockery at Catelyn. Ha ha. Larry Shaw's fate is sealed. If he survives, I will... You will what? Catelyn gritted her teeth, her eyes blazing with defiance. The last time Aaron had made a similar boast, Zane Martell had triumphed, and Aaron had to eat his words. I dare you to say it again. Aaron faltered, unwilling to repeat his mistake. I, I, how could he possibly pass? Ten minutes later, Zane Martell sat by the lake, deep in thought. Suddenly, an idea sparked in his mind. Could it be willpower? He stood up quickly, releasing a powerful wave of willpower. As it touched the lake, ripples formed, growing larger and faster. Stepping onto the ripple, he found solid footing. As expected. With his willpower guiding him, Zane Martell moved across the lake. Though it spanned only a hundred meters, the challenge was far from...
over. As he reached the lake's center, the water began to churn violently. Waves surged, and a colossal water column erupted from the depths. Before Zane Martell, a 30-meter-tall catfish demon beast emerged, its immense presence dwarfing him. The creature's power was immeasurable, its face adorned with the spectral visages of fallen warriors. The figures bared their fangs and brandished their claws. Their eyes were empty, howling like ghosts and wolves, over a hundred of them. Zane Martell realized these human figures matched the bones buried at the lake's bottom. The demonic beast had devoured those who entered this level. I can't use my vital energy right now. I'm probably no match for this demonic beast. The catfish demon beast let out strange sounds. Its huge fins surfaced and slammed toward Zane Martell's head. Zane Martell shivered, releasing his strong willpower to pave his way. He moved quickly to avoid the attack. The fins at the lake's surface, causing massive waves. Even Zane Martell struggled to stay upright. Larry Shaw, run. You'll get through once you're out of here. Ha ha. Larry Shaw's as arrogant as the rest. Thinks he can kill such a divine beast? Let him suffer in the belly of the beast. Zane Martell needed to reach the other side of the lake to pass this level. Those who died under the beast were too arrogant, knowing the rules. But Zane Martell knows the rules. You want to? Since my willpower can let me walk on water, I can kill you with it too. His willpower surged, and his body sped up. He adapted to the catfish demon beast's attack pattern. The fish's attacks were monotonous, only using its tail fins. In Zane Martell's eyes, it was as slow as a turtle. Three minutes later, Zane Martell's mastery of willpower reached a new level. He stopped suddenly and clapped his hands. Die. A burst of willpower, far surpassing the extraordinary realm and nearing the transcendent realm, burst out. Two huge, transparent hands formed in the air. The hands were majestic, like a tide. They held the fish tightly and exerted force. A roar resounded through the whole space. The catfish demon beast was crushed by Zane Martell. The willpower flew out from the beast's body, spinning in the sky before slowly entering Zane Martell's body. What new powers would this willpower bestow upon Zane Martell? How would he face the challenges ahead with his newfound strength? In a level where the extraordinary is the norm, Zane Martell's ascension through the ranks was nothing short of spectacular. On a seemingly ordinary day, he shattered the bounds of the extraordinary level with a single triumphant breakthrough. The air around him seemed to crackle with newfound energy, his senses sharper, his vision clearer. He could feel every pulse of magic in the environment, a testament to his newfound power. This demonic beast, its magic is beyond anything I've ever experienced. Meanwhile outside, spectators like Katie and Master Gideon watched in disbelief. The sun hung low, casting long shadows across the ancient courtyard, a perfect stage for Zane's extraordinary feat. Katie's laughter pierced the tense air, her faith in Zane Martell unwavering, resonating with a mix of relief and triumph. I knew it. Zane's got this. There's no way he'd go down without a fight. But not everyone shared her enthusiasm. Master Gideon, flustered and incredulous, confronted Madame Evelyn with eyes blazing with frustration. The crowd's murmurs grew louder, a chorus of doubt and disbelief. Great Elder, this cannot stand. Zane Martell must pay for divine beast in our test. The killing of divine beasts is permitted, Gideon. That's the entire point of this challenge. As Zane Martell advanced through the levels with ease, dispatching demonic beasts as if swatting flies, anticipation built. Each strike was precise, fueled by the raw power coursing through him. Hours later, he stood before the last challenge, a massive glowing statue known ominously as the Bow to Heaven. The statue loomed large, bathed in an eerie light that seemed to flicker with an ancient, almost sentient awareness. This is it? Just a statue? What's next? The field outside was a mix of tension and mockery, with Master Gideon sneering at the impossibility of Zane Martell's success. The crowd's skepticism was palpable there. If Zane somehow makes it, I'll call him Daddy. As Zane Martell contemplated the statue, legends whispered through the crowd. This wasn't just any statue. It was a revered ancestor of the Northern Dark Demon Country, a figure of immense power and mystery. The tales say he was a god among men, capable of toppling dynasties with a flick of his wrist. Zane, faced with a daunting sculpture, made his choice. 
With a reluctant sigh, he knelt, setting off a chain of events no one could have predicted. The air grew heavy with anticipation, each second stretching into an eternity. The crowd held its collective breath, waiting for what would come next. If kneeling is what it takes, then so be it. The statue shuddered, cracks spiderwebbing across its surface as Zane's simple act of respect seemed to undo centuries of stasis. The ground beneath him trembled, and a low rumble filled the air, echoing through the courtyard. It was as if the very earth responded to his will. What is this power? Who is Zane, truly? The crack deepened and the statue split, revealing a hidden passage. Zane, now proven beyond the shadow of a doubt, advanced, his name whispered in awe by friends and foes alike. The crowd's collective breath seemed to catch, a mix of fear and reverence palpable in the air. It was clear that Zane was no ordinary challenger. He was a force unto himself. How? He doesn't even share our bloodline. Amidst the ruins of tradition and stone, Zane faced the future, a new title within grasp but surrounded by doubts and dangers. The once invincible traditions of the Northern Dark Demon Country trembled before his resolve. He was poised to take on a role that many believed was not meant for him, a role that would test him in ways he could never have imagined. Prepare the coronation. Zane Martell will be our next wolf prince. Over my dead body. Zane's new reality dawned on him and everyone else as the rubble settled. He wasn't just a contender. He was a revolution. Each whisper carried a blend of awe and trepidation, a recognition of the seismic shift that Zane's ascension represented. I bowed, but I bow to no one's shadow, not even a god's. He thinks he can just come in here and take what's ours. He's got another thing coming. As the crowd began to disperse, whispers filled the air. Zane's victory was the talk of the town, and everyone had their own theories about what would happen next. The tension was palpable, the air thick with uncertainty and speculation. Zane, you've done something incredible, but be careful. There are those who won't accept this easily. I know, Katie, but I've come this far. I can't back down now. The path ahead was fraught with danger. Every ally could be a potential traitor, every corner a potential ambush. Zane knew that to hold his new position, he would need to be stronger, smarter, and more ruthless than ever before. The stakes had never been higher and the margin for error had never been slimmer. The coronation ceremony was set for three days hence, and in those three days, Zane prepared himself for the trials to come. He trained harder than ever, pushing his new limits and honing his skills. The time would soon come for him to prove himself once more, not just as a warrior, but as a leader. Each day was a crucible, forging him into the leader he needed to be. The night before the coronation, the city was alive with whispers and speculation. The moon hung low, casting a silvery glow over the ancient city. Zane stood on a balcony, looking out over the city, his mind racing with thoughts of the future. The air was cool, carrying the faint scent of jasmine, a small reminder of the world outside his impending responsibilities. He could see the lights of the city, the flicker of torches, hear the distant murmur of voices. Tomorrow, everything changes. I hope I'm ready. The weight of his new responsibility settled on his shoulders like a mantle of iron. Yet beneath the burden, there was a spark of hope, a belief that he could bring about a new era, not just for himself, but for everyone in the Northern Dark Demon Country. His resolve was unwavering, his spirit indomitable. As dawn approached, Zane knew that whatever happened, he would face it head on. The future was uncertain, but his resolve was unshakable. The time had come to step into the light and claim his destiny. The coronation would be the first step in a journey that would change the world forever. And so, with a heart full of resolve and a mind sharp with anticipation, Zane Martell prepared to face his fate. The world watched, breath held, as the dawn of a new era began.